Welcome to Journey for Service. I'm William Laddick, and we are joined once again by our regular guest, the mayor of Calgary, or soon to be mayor, depending on how you look at things, Randall Kaiser. Hi, Randall. How are you doing? I'm great, William. And yeah, I'm a mayor now, like we say, you know, and in the future, we don't know because I uh, there's still a selection process, right? But right now I'm the mayor, so let's leave it at that. Hey, and guess what I figured out? What? This is show number Q. Ooh. 17. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want to get this banned, but cool. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick up on that one. I thought, oh, wow, 17. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saved the glory for you. How about that? Oh, nice. You, you mean people are, people are, you are, people are getting actually banned for using that letter, that one that comes right after R? I'm or just before R? Wait a minute. <laughs> trying to think. Yesterday there was somebody, uh, yeah, there's a guy who I follow only because he was a guest on the, the Thrive Network um, interviews that they do on Saturday, and his name is Larkin Rose, and he posted something on Facebook, actually, it wasn't YouTube, it was Facebook, and it was just a short little ditty, and they banned him for 30 days. <laughs> So this is getting so amazing. Eh? Yeah, they're having fun. They're having fun. So uh, they are. Go for it, guys. How's your yeah. week been? How's your week been? Any any new mayoralty news going on in Calgary in, in your field? Yeah, it's been a little quieter. I mean, the stampedes all over. They're starting to have some festival festivals and some music things. I was at one this afternoon. I just kind of laid down on the grass outside the fence for a while and listened because I could hear just as good as if I was pay the 150 bucks minimum to get in on a tarp so I just laid there for a while I might go back there this evening because they started up again in the evening find another place just outside the fence and <laughs> <laughs> but there's all kinds of uh, people now that they've now that they're you know they've been freed they can breathe again now they want to sing even and dance and stuff like rather than just walk around with their head down and something like this you know like now they're singing and dancing it's just amazing out here in alberta <laughs> you know uh we make fun of it of course a little bit from time to time but uh you know that old expression you know fondness makes the heart grow fonder and you really kind of you know at least for me the way i look at it is you, you miss that you know and and now that it's starting to come back and you're starting to see it it's like it's got more joy to it. It's got more jubilation because it's been away for a while. We haven't been able to feel and, and experience that expression of joy, right? I know. It's amazing. Like, I'm, I'm ready to dance. I, I was just down here. Can you see that, William? There's like a, a soccer field, right? So um, I'm up at, so I'm up at, up at SAIT at the, oh. at the uh, SAIT College. Uh, Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. We talked about that before you went here, you said. But uh, they, the gates are open on that, on that soccer field down there. Like they're, they've been locked up for every time I've ever walked past here. So I went and walked in there and I didn't realize like it's, uh, it's built on top of a parkade. So there's no dirt. It's not grass. It's a turf, turf thing. Artificial. But what they've done is they, they put rubber like it smells like a, a tire factory down there because there, there's rubber underneath and then they put the turf and then they sprinkled rubber uh, particles on top. So I was walking around, it, it doesn't smell very good. And there's probably a lot of, what do they call that uh, stuff that's in tires? I can't remember, there's a chemical in them. <laughs> Not so good for you, but whatever. But it uh, it's nice and soft. And I thought, hey, that's pretty cool how they built that that soccer pitch down there yeah anyway that's got nothing to do with the mayor's job i guess <laughs> you know, well, you're doing on that natural, front natural field inspection is what you were doing you know that's what it means yes. to do yeah thank you yes <laughs> and i get you know that does that does remind me of another quick story that i just had i was down at the park like i said and the, uh, prince's island is where they're having this folk music festival and a friend of mine he's a 
a busker. Uh, what the heck's his first name? James is his name, but Busker James, they just call him. And he's a P accordion player. And oh God, he's, he's good. He's from the East Coast. So he's got that East Coast flair to his accordion playing. And he sings a little bit too, you know, that high pitched kind of voice. And about my age, I guess. And we visit quite often. He's in a handicapped chair. But he, uh, he was set up down there and he says, yeah, I was watching a few of your videos. Like, I think you got a pretty good run at this mare thing. And I said, yeah, I think so. I said, you know, people have been asking me to put the money in or they want to put the money in. I keep saying no. He says, why not? I said, well, because it's a divine process. There's two things going on here. Number one, I said that I would run if Joe Biden and Kamala were in the White House in September of this year. Well, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I, I, you know, <laughs> I don't really have to run, but, but don't get me wrong. Unless I can get some other candidate on board saying, wait a minute, you're right. There is no such thing as debt. I support, you want to be my advisor? You want to be my chief financial advisor? I'll, I'll go in there and, you know, I'll be the chief advisor for some other candidate if that happens. And I've actually kind of tested the ground there with the lady named Grace. La Grace Lum or Lamb? I can't remember. Sorry, Grace. But I thought that name was so beautiful because we're living in Grace now. Remember, we're in we're in that Grace time, which is the now time, which is godly time. We're not talking about the future and other than just how beautiful it is. And so anyway, oh Grace Yan, that's her name. Sorry, Grace Yan. Sorry, Grace, if you're watching this, and I doubt if you are. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Gracie, if you if you want me to be your financial advisor, because I'm going to get pretty damn busy here. As soon as this thing busts open, I'm getting word from the people that I talk to up the ladder. They're saying, Kaiser, you're going to have to be part of this. Like, we need you. Like, not just as a project, you know, waiting for project funding. We got to have you on board. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, so back to the busker for just a second before I let you back in. I know you were thinking of something there with your finger. Yeah, yeah, but I anyway, the, the busker, <laughs> we can think with our fingers now, too. That's another thing about grace. <laughs> so anyway, this busker, James guy, he says, you know, they stopped me from going down on 8th Avenue. They put in a new bylaw down there where you have to have a special license to that I can't even play on the 8th Avenue Mall anymore. And I said, he says, can you fix that for me? I said, if I'm the mayor, when I get, sorry, when I get to be the mayor, even if Grace is the mayor, I'll, I'll take that forward. You know, like I didn't tell him about Grace, but I said, you know, when I'm the mayor, I'll take that forward. I'll get you in there on 8th Avenue again. Don't worry about it. So get ready, Calgary, because we're going to have some accordion playing back on 8th Avenue when I'm the mayor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, free entertainment for everyone everywhere. How about that? Well, <laughs> Beautiful, almost, William. Almost everywhere. I mean, there might be some places you don't want to have music, but yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, the thought I had is I remember watching um, a video that you were on yesterday, and I can't remember if it, if it was our Dow call or a different call, but I remember you saying something about um, coming... Uh, heading into a new world where we aren't in, in the old paradigm of, of competition. And then I thought about the mayoralty race and I thought, well, that's still a race, you know? And I thought, I wonder if Randall would be open and it's funny you should, you know, mention Grace now, but I just thought, I wonder if Randall would be open to sharing the mayorship, you know, if it, if it made sense, you know, if it was someone who wanted to contribute in a certain way, had certain talents and, and skills that maybe you didn't have or didn't didn't want it to to you know be responsible for. How, what's your feeling about that? A little bit more of a cooperative type of approach, or maybe making your counselors co-mayors or something. Well, I think if Grace is watching this, we should sit down and talk. And actually, it's kind of cool because. I'm going to find a better spot to sit and then I can don't have to hold the phone up. I can set it down somewhere. Sure. But, you know, I was downtown with some friends and I, I don't want to name them yet because they have a, they have a, you know, mega business, these guys, and they've, they've got uh, people coming forward 
that he's introducing to me. And these are some of the people that are saying, well, give that guy some money like, <laughs> and they're working and get him in the race. And I'm like, no, it's not a race. It's a walk in the park. Remember, it's not nothing to do with racing and it's nothing to do with competition. I'm just the mayor now and I'll be the mayor after as long as everybody just accepts me because that's all you got to do is accept me. I'm not here to you know, trample on any toes or any of that stuff. I'm just here to be. So anyway, these, that guy, where was I? Oh, he said that he knows Grace and he knows her manager. And he sent me a picture of her, of her manager today, uh, uh, her campaign manager, I guess. And this guy's like, you know, bucked up, if you want to call it that, not, not in a rutting sense, in a dollar sense. <laughs> he's got money. And he's got business and he's like, uh, he's well known in Calgary too. So they've got some like power behind them, these guys. And I said, okay, let's, let's sit down. Come on. Let's, you know, we don't have to think of this as a race. Like you're saying, William, you know, let's get this thing on the road, on the go and have some fun. And, you know, all I really want to do is tell everybody that we can, uh, here we go. This will work. We can, uh, you know, create comfort income because there's no such thing as debt. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to work with whoever wants to play that game with me because it's not, you know, the old game is getting pretty tiring. That one there where they say there's debt and, you know, we got to have a budget. <laughs> Bullshit economics and inflation. My God, inflation. What if inflation happens? <laughs> all that fear and all that worry and all that stuff. It's just like, I don't worry about that. What do you What do you need? Like, we'll make sure we do it properly, and we'll ask the people, "Do you guys really want this green line, for instance?" And if they say yes, okay, poof, we give them the money. And if they want, which I think they do, you know, comfort in for come for every Calgarian, and that costs us five grand a piece every month. And everybody says yes, that's a good idea. Then poof, we, we do it. We don't go to this other silly game that we've been playing for far too long in this, in this world of man, this new world order, you know, <laughs> it's satanic stuff. Crazy thinking, remember? Satanic is just crazy shit. And don't worry, they're laughing just like I am because they didn't think you'd pull it off this long. Like, they really didn't. They thought that's, how in the hell could we ever get this going for even a decade, let alone you know, it's been a lot of years, guys. <laughs> Most of them are dead already. They just, they just like, holy shit, I can't even hang on to, to see the end of this because, you know, see you later, George Bush. See you later, Prince Philip. See you later, David Rock, Rockefeller. All of those old boys, they croaked already. They, <laughs> they laughed at us throughout their life and then they died before they got to see the end. And, but, you know, this last year was the end. Because anybody that hasn't caught on to the idea that there was a new world order and they were trying to control your minds with this and with this and all kinds of different things, you know, television and everything. If people didn't catch on to that, well, then we never will. You know, this last year was the perfect apocalypse, which means the revealing, right? It was a beautiful year. And, uh, and, you know, I've been waiting to celebrate because everybody thought I was nuts until now. And now they think, holy cow, look at that guy. He's not nuts. Look at him. He's, he's doing, he is perfectly normal. <laughs> In a year that's considered extremely crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's perfectly normal, right? <laughs> that guy that wanted to pay my, uh, pay my, um, uh, entry fee into the race from northern alberta he says to me the first thing he said when he phoned he says i think you need another roll of tinfoil down there guys. was that the school buddy that you were telling us about last week yes but after as the call went on he realized that you know maybe he needed a little bit of that tinfoil himself <laughs> well we said this we've said this a number of times already but you know and this is probably the biggest challenge you face i mean i don't get the sense that you're worried about competition like who else is running and all that kind of stuff i think it seems to me like the biggest challenge for you is is to really get people to 
one, understand your message of what you're trying to say, and two, to actually grasp it as a as a real message, not just, you know, some guy who's saying things and laughing about it. It's like, you are serious, even though, you know, you, you like to joke around a lot, but you are serious about this. But you were even expressing some frustration to me in a phone call earlier this week about people just, some people are still just not getting your message. You know, they're just not quite getting it. And that's, you know, you didn't, you didn't express frustration, but you, you kind of were, I, I think, and maybe I'm putting words in your mouth now, but I was getting the sense that you were, you were hoping for more people to kind of pick up on this a little bit more quickly. Can you shed a little bit more light uh, as to how you were feeling a couple of days ago around that? Sure, William. That's, it's like what we were talking about just before we came on air, you know, on our, our program here. Mm -hmm. uh oh, I got to get this off my screen. Anyway, we, uh, we were talking about this and like, you know, on this channel, we only have 170 subscribers or something like that on my, my YouTube channel, which is currently still banned <laughs> for another week. Uh, I think I got about 1500, but you know, I usually get five or six comments and, you know, maximum two, 300 views unless we have a celebrity like sasha stone or charlie ward or anna von writes then we shot her up there you know we were getting like well over the 200 mark you know? <laughs> but when i'm on my own it's like usually 60 to 150 and and you know what would have that done if i would have got 1500 every time it would have been a challenge for my ego as small as my ego is <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, little. You, it's tiny. you got to work on that. <laughs> you see these quantum egos, like we're into quantum stage, the Q. We're into quantum physics and quantum intelligence and quantum banking and quantum everything. Really, it's just about quantum consciousness, and that's been there all along, and quantum integrity, which has been there all along, and quantum authenticity, which has been there all along. And I think we got that, you know, but the quantum ego, like my quantum. <laughs> I didn't plan this. Yeah. You yeah, started exactly. this. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like we're almost getting into a size matters kind of competition here. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> don't you bring Angel into this. Okay. But never mind. Angel is probably watching, but two other ladies who probably won't watch. This is good because I didn't know how this was unfolding. And a lot of it isn't unfolding because of me. It's unfolding because the quantum consciousness and that source energy, knowledge and wisdom is coming through to us all because we're spending a lot more time alone and we're spending a lot more time in kind of meditative places like you meditate a lot. And I can see things happening in your life that maybe you don't see, but I see them happening for you. Your responses and your reactions to Randy's little ego and all things are changing as we go. But, you know, I got to tell you, it was Andrea, some people may know her, and her friend Heather, they phoned me yesterday and they're asking me a bunch of questions about sovereignty and things like that. And I was doing my best to help out. Like, you know, a lot of people will talk about sovereignty certification and, you know, paperwork that goes along with it and becoming a national part of the assemblies and stuff like that, that Anna von Reitz is promoting. And I encourage all of that stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's all good stuff. Most of it is about your own thinking as far as how sovereign you are, which sovereignty to me means just basically eliminating or at the very least minimizing the idea of government which is something between you and the higher mind the higher self the your own dreams you name it you know like something in between and just like i've eliminated a long time ago but a lot of people want to minimize it right so we can start to minimalize it by having some paper behind it. And I, you know, I, I created with some friends, uh, 
common law pure trust many years ago already. And it's there's a sovereignty certificate that goes along with it with autograph and gold lettering and all kinds of, you know, coded stuff. It's in this orally coded is what they call it. So they, they this one isn't like parte syntax language. It just eliminates the this or li, those kind of prepositional things. So it's a very interesting document and it's it's 400 year old document uh, revised by a friend of mine who I think still think of him as friend, but he doesn't like him, Grantham Taylor Hughes, who is the revisionist for that 400 year old Rothschild, if you want to call him that document. So what I said to the ladies was, because they were asking about that. And I said, well, you know, we've tested it out and it really doesn't work in the legal jurisdiction because they don't want to recognize it. And as long as they, this legal jurisdiction continues to exist, which is part of the fiat money in the public and the credit versus credit debit system in the banking system that's based on autographs and agreement, that's all linked together with the um, legal jurisdiction, Looniverse, Admiralty, <laughs> Maritime legal system, right? So those people, uh, you know, they're not going to recognize it. So if you, you know, want to have that common law jurisdiction trust and that sovereignty document certificate of some kind there's many places you can go including our first republic registrar foundation anna von Reitz. uh you want to get really heavy get into uh russell j hyphen gould or whatever russell j gould hyphen no it's hyphen gould j. colon so, in there somewhere too yeah he puts in those colons and that's all parte syntax and that's really really interesting stories there and i love him like i've comment on his videos and he gives me a like back like i I've never spoken with Russell, but he's got a cool mind. And I, you know, very complex, but very cool. It is very, but anyway, very complex. Yeah. You know, I, I have a little side story that I can add to that as well. Sure. Uh, back in 1999, when I was, again, living here in Vancouver, because I went to Alberta for nine years, but it was before I came back the second time um, while I was still here, I was introduced to the person who developed the technology, if you want to call it that, that Russell Gould uses. His partner, David Wynn Miller, David Wynn, David hyphen Wynn colon Miller, um, he was the one who invented the actual syntax. And there's a mathematics to it as well, apparently. Apparently you can write the sentence forwards or backwards using the syntax that, that he's developed and it still makes grammatical sense. But don't, don't try to ask me to explain it because I never quite, never quite got into it. But I took, I took some of the courses and it was fascinating stuff. And, and the story between Russell and David Wynn as well is quite fascinating. And unfortunately, David Wynn is now deceased. He uh, died a few years ago, um, but it, it's a fascinating story. And there are actually some pretty interesting videos even, even off of Russell's channel so, uh, so I'm aware of some of that kind of stuff too. It's, it, is, it is fascinating. It's a little bit of a head scratcher though too, because you really have to wrap your mind around the, you know, grammatical uh, language and, and how to write it and, and how that all works. It, it is fascinating though, that's for sure. Um, well, you were to, I, I wanted to take a half a step back because you mentioned, you know, we mentioned our friends at, at YouTube and Facebook briefly, and uh, you were talking about small, channel and and all of that kind of thing you know it's funny because on yesterday's interview you know our mutual friend Amid was sharing how uh didn't matter how big or small you are youtube will still give you lots of love if you do the right things or the wrong things depending on the kind of love you're looking for but you know uh, it was kind of an interesting story there too now the question i had for you which was i don't know kind of came out of the blue you you made a connection with yeah, you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, please. I want to just kind of finish up that common law of pure trust stuff quickly. Sure. Yeah. Because uh, we're we're on that. So let's finish it up. So the David Wynn Miller, yes, I'm very familiar. Uh, one of my partners, Paul Simons, who's a genius in that linguistic and language business, he 
he constructs our trusts, okay, uh, common law trusts. And, and he's still in business and they're doing those for people. If anybody's interested, we can hook you up with him. I mean, he's a brilliant man. He's got to be paid for his work. Don't get me wrong. But he's actually brought in some of David Wynn Miller's parte syntax language into the trust and the sovereignty certificate documents that we have as well. So just to finish that one off, but on the story of the ladies asking me, the last thing I wanted to say was that when I first got that, I didn't really understand much of it, the common law peer trust that I have, and it still exists, and it's a beautiful document. Uh, I had a speeding ticket, I think it was, or some kind of ticket in legal jurisdiction. So I went into the courts with this, and I, ha I have it in a red binder. It's about that thick, and there's only 25 pages or something of course, you keep your minutes in the back. So it's a very, it's a very complicated document. And you have to go through a lot of, you know, autographs to go through the process and stuff with a trustee and all this. But anyway, I took that into the court with me. And they say, you know, the people in the common law world say, don't ever show them the minutes and you don't have to show them the guts of the document. But the first couple pages is all you really need and you're fine. So I decided, okay, I'm going to take this in the court. <laughs> and I presented it to this judge. And she looked at me kind of sideways. She knew exactly what it was. Eh? And she says, well, you're in the wrong jurisdiction for that. And that was the end of it. She wouldn't talk about it anymore. It was just like, are you going to pay your ticket or not? You know, like it was just complete ignorance, complete, utter, just don't even talk to me about that. You're in the legal jurisdiction. You're on my ship. You're in my boat. You're in my jurisdiction. Just leave that stuff out there. So like I say, if, if people think it's going to help them in the legal jurisdiction, no, you'll have to get some common law jurisdiction people to, to come into for court and fight with you. So if you want to do that and go through that whole kangaroo court bullshit you probably can win things and you can get rid of tickets don't get me wrong there's there's no doubt about that but it's it's still not recognized <laughs> so it's like just feel sovereign that's what i'm trying to get through the point is know that you're sovereign know that your birth certificate was a fraud know that every document that you sign in their legal jurisdiction is an autographed authentic work of art that has value and that you're the authentic authority of that and just know that stuff just become sovereign in that way so that's all i wanted to say on that one just to finish it off so hopefully you got your question still ready to um, go well that and about five more came up <laughs> but um the, what i was thinking about now is um I forgot the gentleman's name, but I know that he has a channel. He's Canadian. He's from the, uh, Ontario, and he's got a channel called A Warrior Calls, and he um, he's challenging, you know, uh, different cases as well, but using common law inside of inside of their jurisdiction. But what he's doing is he's he's using the paperwork that he drafts that he creates. So it basically moves them out of their jurisdiction into the common law jurisdiction where they can really function and operate from. So he's been having some success too on that. But um, yeah, it's just very interesting. I, I'm wondering as well um, about uh, the documents that you were just talking about, the contracts that you had, were they designed for the maritime law system or were they designed for common law? just strictly common law, William. That's why, like, it's just, you know, it's, it really isn't recognized or anything in the legal jurisdiction, unless you can bring them into yours, like what you're talking about with that young fellow. Yeah. And I think I'm familiar with them too, but I, I can't remember his name either, but you know, God bless them. Let's put it this way, because this system, this new world order system that included that legal jurisdiction, uh, Looniverse, the Roman Catholic Church, the, the City of London, Washington, D.C., all of that was one big tangled Kraken story. All of that had to be chipped away at by so many people 
okay? So many people. And God bless those people that did it from that common law jurisdiction and, and smartening up a lot of judges. I mean, early on, I pissed off a couple of judges by not, you know, dropping into their talk either, but I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy the courts and stuff like that. I never was really much of a fighter. I, you know, a little bit, but, <laughs> but, you know, it was, uh, wasn't that enjoyable because, you know, you always get one back, you know, like, or maybe six. <laughs> so it's, uh, so I just decided, you know, the banking world was, was less of that. And if there was any battle in the banking world, it was just with words. And I love words and I love to play with my ego when I first got involved. And then as I realized, holy cow, I don't even need that. All I got to do is bring these guys love and laugh at them. And they fold like it was a, then it became really fun for me, you know, because, you know, I wasn't afraid to use a little bit of arrogance and condescending conversation with people who thought they had this whole monetary system figured out. Talk to me about bankruptcy and all that kind of frickin garbage debt. I would just go at them and say, like, really? Come on. You're not going to play with this mind. You can play with all the other minds that you want. But you're not going to play with this one. You know, this one is unfuckable. Like this mind is unfuckable. You can't fuck with this mind. Excuse me, that's three in a row. But it was that the way I got with them. And, that, and I mean, then they'd run away from it. It's like, okay, fine. You know, like it, you're going to be a bunch of big babies. You know that we've got this figured out and your system has failed, whether it's in the legal jurisdiction with these fellows that you're just talking about or in the banking system with me. And others like me who know what the hell this is all about, just a big gong show fraudulent story, well, then run away. And like I said, I've said this before, but Grantham Taylor Hughes, the last thing he said to me swearing on the phone and cussing was, okay, then fuck you. You can have the whole banking system. I'm taking the spiritual with me. And I'm like, spiritual? Like, you think you got that? That's a Jesus Christ story. So in fact, if you're thinking competition, you lost on both sides because you just gave me the banking side and you lost to Jesus Christ. So whatever. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that question now. And Mary. I haven't asked that question yet. Hang on, hang on to that thought. You can, you can tag it on because I'm. this is flowing right in from what you said because you mentioned Good. Grantham Taylor Hughes. And I was going to ask you, have you, did you ever, when you were communicating with him, have, did you ever run into any of his folks? Uh, yes, I read a number of his books and and a number of his papers in the spiritual realms. Like I was right in on his calls, weekly Sunday calls. He taught me about Akita and his his leadership as Sri Kadafji. That was his name, right? So he had a spiritual following. He didn't call it religion. It was just a following. And, you know, you can always unseat me, in, but no, you can't. You know, it's <laughs> it was a hierarchical story and and there don't get me wrong there was some beauty in it and i still say to this day that man had such an incredibly intelligent mind that i wish he'd just come with me and help me out here because we could flip this switch on this system a lot quicker he loved the story of the asset back to counts when he first met me i was in that and and i was very close at that time but you know the timing just wasn't right with the rest of the world but I was very close with some of the asset back to count holders. And oh my God, he was nice to me. It was like, oh, Randall, <laughs> you know, he was rubbing his hands together because his family had cut him off from getting credit for projects that he wanted in what he called the, the Omniverse Institute, T-O-I. And he sent me all those papers and I'll keep them private just for his sake. But my God, that man had intelligence and he was a, above technology that a lot of people talk about in the terms of relostatics okay is and most people aren't going to even recognize that word it might not even be in the dictionary but relostatics was his um his own technology for movement and energy right so it was beyond magnetism it was beyond uh, hydrogen those kind of things it was beyond even um I don't know what are some of the other quantum energy fields that people discuss. It doesn't matter. But he was he was beyond that into this what he related to as relostatics. And he trained me in that, but I couldn't grasp it. It was just too much for me. Like honestly, I listened to him for 
probably between six and eight hours a week for eight or nine months. And most of it was just listening. Like I just sat and listened. And, and you know, of course I'd ask once in a while, but I just said to my mind, absorb this, learn it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not harmful. He's not trying to draw me into some satanic realm or anything. Just learn it. So, you know, I can start whipping off things about MT-103 credit enhancement instruments or, you know, stuff that, that he taught me, but there's no point, you know, like it's, it's, it was the system that was in place to manifest credit based on not only our autographs, signatures at the public level or in the banking level when we autograph a mortgage or any other you know so-called loan that's which is the wrong word for what they're using but they use those words and um, above that into the world of bank to bank transmission between two bankers and all you needed there was autographs of two bankers to poof create credit lines manifest credit lines huge ones you know $50 million, $500 million. Okay, just get another banker, you know, give him a call, but you can't call directly. You, you'll be caught soliciting and the, and the uh, bureaucratic um, uh, regulators would come in. Regulators who don't regulate to, you know, threaten you or take you to court or anything, they regulate so that they can make some money off this and remind you that you have to do it right. That's the only job regulators do at that high level of bank, within the bank to bank uh, credit enhancement instrument creation business, right? Which is what it was all about. And was is the key word because they knew it was gonna fail sooner or later. It's failing and in comes the big accounts, peer to peer transactions. And we'll talk about Bitcoin in a bit, but I wanna let you go again. Yeah. I. Um... It, it, it was a great answer. And I think, I think you misunderstood one word I said, and it went down a different path, but that's okay. I, I think you kind of answered my question anyways. I was asking you, I think, I think you heard me say, have you ever seen or read any of his books? I think is what you heard. But what I asked was, have you ever met his folks as in parents? Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing the answer to that would have been no, because uh, just the way you described that last answer. So anyway, you never you never met the Rockefeller mommy and daddy anywhere along the way, I assume, or not the Rockefeller, the Rothschild. Yeah, well, and it's actually just Bauer. Like he wasn't even Rothschild. It was Rothschild, just a word. He was of the Bauer family or the Baron Baron von Brotich family, right? I see. So, but mommy and daddy, that's an important one, and we've mentioned it before. I don't know on these videos, but when you and I have talked before how one of the most touching moments with that man, who, again, revisionist for the common law pure trust, which is what all of these amazing banking families, amazing, I'm kind of making fun of that, banking families run under, and the managing directors of many, many, many of these big trusts that build the globalist agenda projects throughout the world through investment bankers, okay? Investment bankers being guys like me that have to introduce you. Otherwise they can, they get caught in this game of um, solicitation. So they need these brokers and investment bankers to pawn off the little stuff. And you know, if you don't need them anymore, just get rid of them, act in dishonor, let them suffer the karma while you sail up into the higher realms, all that bullshit stories that they had. But anyway, the bottom line is with mommy was one time he had calmed down enough to say to me just we we're talking personal and we did that a fair bit towards the end the last few months it got very personal we got to be close friends in my mind and we joked back and forth and he says did your mom ever call you in from the backyard for dinner and i said what the hell are you talking about grantham he says i'm serious he says i said well of course i said what do you mean like it was just it's all there was you know he says well mine didn't it was the chauffeur or the butler so you see how important that was? And it was a touching moment. So when you think about the difference between authentic, compassionate people like you and I, it's because of our mom and dad. 
You know, they loved us. And that whole love story that I talk about, the love muffin Kaiser, <laughs> is all about, you know, because my mom and dad loved me so much. And honestly, like, you know, they both died too young, but, and me and the old man scrapped a fair bit, but they were so loving and kind. My mother, especially, just incredible human being. I mean, grossed me out when she licked the freaking Kleenex and wiped my mouth and stuff like that. The smell that off her lipstick. Remember that, William? When they lick the Kleenex and then they'd rub your face. Oh, I can still remember that smell. That's a reminder. And I'm sorry, Mom. You know, it wasn't because you had bad breath. It was just the way it was. <laughs> she just loved me that much. Yeah, uh, I, I, it, it reminded me. Actually, you, you posted a really beautiful song on Facebook today, and you shared it with the. Uh, a lot of the folks from the Dow Group, and um, it was a it was a great song. It, it is a great song, and um, it reminded me of a song that I really like. Actually, a couple of them, and I shared them with you back on the Facebook channel. And one of them was called "93 Million Miles" uh, from Jason Mraz, and I particularly like the version he did it with the Daryl's House on that show. And so that was the video I shared with you, but. It, um, it's got some great lyrics in it and it speaks to very much the parents. You know, you can always come back home and uh, that, that gets me every time. Cause you know, even though, um, you know, I'm, you know, fairly independent person. I like to, you know, live on my own and everything. You know, my parents are always, the door's always open kind of thing. So I can completely relate to that for sure. And I'll let you speak to that if you have anything to say, but I also wanted to ask you a question about, uh, something you said way back earlier, but does tie into the Grantham Taylor story a little bit. And that is um, when you go through this process of being able to, you know, like if we're gonna do the, the green line that you were talking about, and if the, if the city really wants it and the people of the city really want it, then we'll just do it. I never asked you, how long does that process take when you actually begin that process? Obviously there's a procedure that you have to follow because you mentioned those those guys that come in who, you know, tell you how to do things right and things to consider because they have a certain vested interest in how things are done. But how long does that process typically take when everything goes smoothly? Well, that's a good question, William. I mean, it's going to be, there's going to be administration work that has to be done once this rolls out, right? Mm -hmm. But right now, the administration process is that Justin Trudeau and that young woman that's the finance minister who has another young woman that's her assistant, you know, they don't have a clue what's going on, honest to God. And the new Bank of Canada governor, <laughs> they all get together, all three or four of them on the phone and they say, okay, we need, we need another two, $2 billion or we need another $50 billion because we got to buy, you know, these things to put in their arms. So we got to get that okay, can you just create some bonds so they go through that process? And it's quite quick right now. You know, they just go through it and say, okay, offer some bonds. And then they offer those bonds for sale <laughs> to the banks. And the banks say, well, you promise to pay them back? Will you, will you promise like that your Canadian citizens will pay us back? Just, just autograph here if you promise, because it's all about promises, remember? And then the banks don't they don't they say, debt out of that? Don't they create debt out of that? And that's what that's the debt that we are supposedly supposed to be paying. <laughs> Isn't it brilliant, William? And that's how fast it happens. So it's not out of thin air, folks. It's not out of thin air. It's agreements and promises, right? And once you promise the bank that you'll pay them back, then they just make it. <laughs> they just they just manifest it. Okay, here, here you go. But you promise you're going to give it back. You know, whatever. Freaking lunacy. And you think I'm crazy. You know, <laughs> folks, you think I'm crazy? Listen to what I just told you. Okay, that is fucking crazy. But that's the way it works. So our new process, I can't promise how it's going to work. And I can't promise how fast it's going to work. But basically, it's going to be very similar. You know, they're the currency will be backed by an asset now. And the people that put that asset into that backing know that they're just the keepers of that asset. It's for the people of earth all the time. So the only thing that has to be decided really is if the people want it or not. 
And if they can wrap their head around the fact that if they want it, they're going to get it, then the process will be quite quick and they'll be able to, and I mean, of course, it's going to take years to build the project, like the green line or something like that. So, you know, you just let it out at a, t a little bit at a time because you don't want, you know, the somebody to hoard some of it or something like that. <laughs> Ridiculous notion. So you just, you know, you let it out at a bit at a time, but you don't need that other process of, of you know, lying to each other about the bonds and stuff like that, sneaking around behind the curtain like the Wizard of fucking Oz. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy, but I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling it so good these days. And I know that we're, I know that we're moving to that, that first release. And once that first project funding comes, whether the project is the United States note, which is just a project, okay? And whoever runs that project, I believe it's going to be Donald Trump for a little while until he until he backs out and says, "Okay, wait a minute, I was just the corporate CEO of the corporation, so we got to have a real election now. We got to actually have, you know, a republic here. So everybody, wrap your heads around that one now, because it's going to take a little bit more time for you to realize that, you know, this was just a hoax, and and." Uh, so anyway, that U.S. note is ready to go, like any time now. So how this is going to roll out, I don't know the details. All I know is that it's going to be good. And if that happens before the project funding release into our, the Abundant Ones Energy Foundation account, or the hundreds or thousands of other accounts that are ready, willing, and able to receive these asset-backed funds that are all over the world like ours, I don't know which is going to come first. It doesn't matter because it's going to happen. <laughs> you can know it. That's all I can say. Just know it. You know, it, it, you, um, you're, you're definitely feeling giddy today, and I kind of like it. Um, and, and I know that you love to wear purple. And I was thinking here, I'm going, we've seen some pictures online of the new U.S. rainbow currency. And they really are, you know, a beautiful note. And they look a lot like, at least the colors look a lot like, you know, the old Canadian notes. And then I got to thinking, have, has anyone heard of any new Canadian notes or, or new Canadian rainbow currency? I haven't heard anything like that. And then I thought, wait a minute, if it hasn't been created yet, I wonder who they put on there. And then I remembered you like purple. And I thought, you'd look really good on a $10 bill. What do you think? <laughs> well, thank you. I'm honored, William. <laughs> well, the cowboy hat and the purple shirt, it just it, it's just so natural. <laughs> <laughs> so which one do you want? The 20? Because well, we should put another queen on there. We should put another lady on that one because oh, you know it's been a lady oh, for so yeah. long. Digilo's so. got you know got that corner. She's gonna get, you know, she gets first choice, you know. But yeah. I'm just thinking, you know. On some of the other notes, you're gonna. I don't think you want the, uh, you know, the, the uh, royalty. So supposedly from the past, you you need new people on there now. So yeah. who are you gonna put there? And I thought, well, uh, Ida Gallery might be a good person. I think Ida, because she's Canadian. Ida, okay. Ida, Ida Severo, would you please be on the twenty dollar note? It's a note now, not a dollar. Ida, would you please do that for us? She'll she'll comment because she usually watches us. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right, She's, Ida, we, we, I, we see your face on that note. Yeah, I said this week that Ida and is is one of many of of my harem ladies that I love because uh, Danush and I were talking. Another lady. She's from the UK though, so we can't. Even though she'd be closer to the Queen because she's from the UK. We can't put you on there, Danusha. You have to, you know, you have to just step back and let Ida be on the $20 bill. But anyway, Danusha and I were talking. I said, I have this harem. It's not near as big as Sasha Stone's harem. I mean, God almighty, that guy's got 40,000 followers on Facebook. And I think 40 or 39,900 are hot women. Like, you know? <laughs> so he's got a harem. I'm telling you. But my little harem is pretty little, but it's, but you know, Ida's there, Danush is there, 
I don't know about Andrew yet. She doesn't really want to talk about that stuff because she's pretty serious. <laughs> and Chris, our Chris, but she's in the U.S., so we can't put her on any of these notes. Uh, who else is on there? Anyway, we better stop. This is getting a little bit carried away. For yeah. those of you that are here tuned in, listening to the mayor of Calgary, I am deeply apologize that I'm a little giddy this afternoon. <laughs> He's definitely having a good time, that's for sure. Well, when you start talking about money, you kind of, you know, you got the feeling a little bit happy, especially when you see what's coming down the pike or have a sense of what's coming down the pike. So why not? Why not be giddy? Why not be happy? You know, um, the, the transition, I don't know, it might be a little bumpy. I've heard some things that it might be a little bit of a challenge, uh, you know, getting getting the last remnants of the old system out. Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments on that, but I know that you like to keep things on the up and up and in the positive as much as possible. Do you have any, any wisdom to share on that note? There's some clover over here in the grass. <laughs> so in other words, share. Okay, don't I worry about it. it. Yeah. In other, in other words, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but William, unless you have some more to go, let's cut her off today. That was a lot of fun. And I want to just leave it on that fun note and yep. see you next week. All right. Sounds good to me. I just need one final blessing to close out the show. We can't finish the show without a final blessing. So please. Of course not. Of course not. With peace, harmony, love, abundance, and freedom for everyone and everything every day on William and my minds, I think. <laughs> abundance sovereignty health love and this was full of euphoria this one today so thank you guys for watching if you hung in there <laughs> i love you william love you randall bye, bye.